Adam here for PC Monitors and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the Dell S2719 DGF's OSD on-screen display menu system. The OSD is controlled by pressable buttons on the underside of the bottom bezel towards the right side. There's also Dell's now infamous vertical power slit power LED design and that glows a gentle white when the monitor is on and it flashes white when the monitor goes on standby. If you press the first button, you get this little quick menu which shows some of the basic features you've got active on the monitor. And you can see that there are button labels now. When you press one of the buttons, you get this little sort of quick menu with button labels showing you what everything's going to do. The second key allows you to quickly enable or disable FreeSync on the monitor. The third button is the black stabilizer and you can customize these I think the first three keys in the OSD and I'll come on to that shortly in the main menu. Black stabilizer and I'll go through that when I'm in the main menu instead. There's then a way to quickly adjust brightness and contrast. Then there's the main menu system and exit. So the main menu has various different sections to it. You can see the main sections are greyed out except for the one you've got active, which is game at the moment for me, which is highlighted in blue. And also has the model number just uh, at the bottom right there. So there are preset modes, the various different presets of the monitor. There are a fair few listed here. Standard, FPS, RTS, RPG, Game 1, Game 2, Game 3, Comfort View, Warm, Cool and Custom Colour. Some of these are explored in the review, the written review, but I don't explore all of them. That's because some of them are completely useless, um, to put it bluntly. FPS, for example, makes everything oversaturated, massively oversharpened and just generally ugly looking. RTS actually has quite good balance, but again, it has this annoying sharpness filter. And there is actually a sharpness function in the monitor, which I'll come on to shortly, but you can't get rid of this strange sharpness filter because it's an additional filter. There's RPG, and that just has very odd color balance. It looks far too cool, and not cool in a good way, cool as in cool tinted, and it has upset gamma as well. And again, it's annoying sharpness filter. I have no idea why they think people like that kind of thing. Most people don't. Game one, game two, and game three, they're fully customizable. So you can have three different sets of settings, and you can access all of the options in the OSD. It's actually exactly the same as custom color, which is sort of if you want your fourth customizable preset. So I use custom color for my test settings and I actually use game one as a low blue light setting and I explore that, I call it relaxing evening viewing, that's explored in the review. So if you use the right arrow here, the button that corresponds to enter if you prefer, and you're, you're on one of these game presets or custom color, you can then access gain, which are your main color channels. There's offset. And if you adjust that, you can kind of slightly adjust the gamma, but you will upset the image in other ways. So you have to be careful with what you do there. There's hue as well. And that actually has six axis control for red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow. And there's saturation controls. And this, of course, again, it's six axis, but it will not do anything to the color gamut. It'll just sort of pull things close to the edge of the gamut or compress them together in the center. So you reduce your shade variety, um, but you can tweak them a bit if you prefer a slightly more saturated or less saturated look or certain tones to look more or less saturated. Next is game enhance mode. And that's a special set of settings. So you can have an on-screen timer and you can have a countdown set to 30, 40, 50, 60 or 90 minutes. And that's a spade in the top left. You can see a timer there. So it just counts down from 30 minutes or whatever you've got it, whatever time you've got it set to. There's an on-screen frame rate display. And I've actually shown this in action in the video review. I find this a bit annoying. It's it doesn't it isn't a frame counter as usual, it just displays the frame rate. So if you're using adaptive sync, then that will adjust according to the frame rate of the content if it's within the variable refresh rate range. But 
it's it adjusts very rapidly and it sort of goes all over the place and it's very difficult to see the exact figure that's being displayed so they probably should have so it isn't updated so rapidly because it's actually just very distracting so you might want to use an in-game fps counter of some description instead there's the display alignment feature this is just to help you line up multiple monitors so you can see there are little red notches now to help you do that next is overclock and that unlocks a 155Hz refresh rate as your maximum rather than 144Hz and that can be enabled if you've got DisplayPort connected. If you're using HDMI then this feature won't be enabled. There's FreeSync which activates or deactivates FreeSync on the monitor or Adaptive Sync and that's explored in the review. So response time setting which is explored in the review, normal, fast or super fast. Dark stabilizer and what this does is, it's similar to BenQ's Black Equalizer in a way, but it's, it doesn't offer much flexibility. So the intention of this is to increase the visibility of dark areas in games, so it'll allow you to spot enemies more easily, that kind of thing. You'll see with the Legon Black Level Test that I've got in the background there, even if you just set it to 1, it lightens up those squares significantly, 2 again, uh, 3 further, and it sort of floods the image. But if you do want a competitive edge, perhaps setting it to one would, would sort of give you that, um, or you can do a more extreme adjustment if you want. But it is good in the sense that it adjusts the gamma curve of the monitor so that these shades are more visible, but it doesn't adjust your black point so you don't lose contrast or anything like that. And some of the brightest shades aren't affected, so it doesn't upset the image as much as it could. Next is hue and saturation. These are greyed out, it's a bit odd, it depends what preset you're on I suppose, but I'm actually using custom colour and you can access these, but what you have to do is you have to go on the preset mode itself and then you can access the little menu that I showed you before, then you can change these settings. So I'm not sure why it's greyed out elsewhere, it's a bit confusing to be honest. There is then a reset game, which will just reset the game menu to the factory defaults. Next there's brightness and contrast and that does what you'd expect. You can adjust the brightness and contrast of the screen in increments of 1%. Input source allows you to select the input used by the monitor. So there's display port, HDMI port 1 which is HDMI 1.4, HDMI 2, HDMI 2, um, auto select which will automatically select the input for you or you can disable that if you want to manually select the input and an option to reset the input source to the factory defaults. Next is Personalize. This has four shortcut keys, so they're the first four buttons before you actually enter the main menu system. So you can have these set to various different things. Preset modes, so you can select one of the preset modes, or you can actually have it so it specifically sets one of your modes. And this might be useful for me, for example, I haven't really explored this functionality before because um, I don't really use the menu system very much. But as I said, I used Game 1 as my low blue light setting. So you can have that set to that. I could have shortcut key 2 set to, um, let's see, custom color, which are my test settings. Shortcut key 3, you can have that set to something you use frequently. So you could have one of the game enhanced settings so you can quickly activate or deactivate, for example, the frame rate display feature. Or you can have it so you can actually just access the menu and use which you prefer, the game enhanced mode menu. The overclock feature, free syncs, you can quickly activate or deactivate that, dark stabilizer, brightness or contrast, which is quite useful for most people, input source, aspect ratio, volume or rotation, quite a bit of flexibility there, so I'll just leave that on the default, which is free sync, although I never really disable that feature. So now you'll see the first button, the second button, third and fourth, they have again their different icons unique to the feature that you've got selected. So the first one there will activate my low blue light setting. The second one will quickly activate my test settings. And again, you can change various different options once you're actually in that preset. And then there's the usual free sync and brightness control. There's power button LED. So if you don't like that little white glow, you can have that so it's off when the monitor's on instead. I don't really mind it, I don't sleep in the room with my monitor on or anything like that, so I'm not really bothered by it. 
USB, you can have that off during standby or on during standby. So if you've got it set to on during standby, you can use things that are connected to the monitor, even if the monitor's off, as if you've pressed the power button. Um, so it's technically still on standby, but in a very low power state. If you've got it on during standby, the USB, it'll use a bit more power, but you'll be able to use your peripherals that are connected to the monitor. Reset personalization, which will reset the personalized menu to the factory defaults. Finally, there's others. There's display info, and that displays some basic information, the model number, the input source being used, the current refresh rate and resolution. The refresh rate will give you a snapshot in time of the refresh rate when you enter the display info setting. So if you've got adaptive sync being used, you've got free sync active, for example, and either your game is running at say 130 frames a second, that should read at 130 Hertz when you enter display info. DDC slash CI, part of the plug and play functionality of the monitor will let you use software to adjust the OSD settings. Leave that on, there's no reason to disable it on modern systems, even if you don't use that functionality. LCD conditioning, you can have that set to on or off. This just cycles through various colors on the screen and it can be used to alleviate mild image retention or it can be used to unstick stuck pixels. In practice though, I don't notice any particular issues with image retention on this monitor or I haven't noticed any particular issues. I didn't have any stuck pixels on my unit either as it happens, but that's something which can vary between units. And unfortunately, if you have got stuck pixels, it's quite likely that they're gonna remain that way. See the firmware revision being used by your monitor, the service tag, reset others, which will reset the others menu to the factory default and factory reset, which will reset everything to the factory defaults. So that's really all there is to the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Dell S2719DGF. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that in the description of the video, alongside information about how you can support the work that we do.